I'm Lucas Spinherney and I live in Vega, Texas. Um, I serve on the Oldham County Soil and Water Conservation District Board. I've been farming pretty much all my life. My dad and granddad's both farmers. We're part of a uh, feral hog swine program that uh, we got funding for buying traps, smart traps with the technology to actually see what's in the trap before you trigger it and drop it. This program comes to the USDA and trickles money down through the state and then through the Soil Conservation District to buy these traps. My name is Shannon Rowley. I'm the District Conservationist in the Vega Field Office. Uh, here in Oldham County, I help with the technical assistance to the producers who are interested in this uh, hog trap program. So the Feral Swine Eradication and Control Program was established in the 2018 Farm Bill. Uh, we're working alongside the districts the Soil and Water Conservation Districts, APHIS, Texas AgriLife Extension, and NRCS, uh, which was awarded between the two agencies, was awarded $75 million in response to the threat feral swine have to landowners in agriculture and animal health. My name is Mike Caldwell. I'm a resource team leader for the Natural Resources Conservation Service, and I have uh, six counties in my team and Oldham County is uh, one of my counties that we are working with on this pilot project. They had enough funds to get eight traps for Oldham County to start with. There will be eight traps in Hartley County and then Potter County, they'll have six traps that they are working with to start out. The traps we got, they are smart traps. They have the capability of a live video feed. Live video feed is most important on getting the whole sounder in the trap at one time. So we don't want the producers to drop the gate on just the first two or three pigs in the trap. We need to train them long enough until we get the whole sounder and be able to remove whole sounders from the population at one time. So feral swine pose a big threat to agricultural producers, not only on cropland, but on rangeland. Um, here in Oldham County, I work with a lot of ranchers. Um, and I've been on their place in just a normal rangeland field where they've rooted up the entire field and it appeared that a, a plow went across that field. Um, so that alone and just on the grazing side of it takes a lot of grazing away from cattle. On the cropland side of it, you know, they can uh, ruin a whole crop just in a, in a matter of no time. It's kind of hard to put a, an actual monetary value on it, but it is possible they can do up to twenty to thirty thousand dollars of damage in one single field if they continue unprovoked on it. I think that a lot of people don't realize uh, probably in Texas, uh, the southern part of the state, there's probably a bigger population and uh, up here they're kind of just getting started. I think that uh, if people were able to see what hogs can do, the destruction, um, it would be like uh, somebody coming in and tearing up your lawn every day or every night and then you'd have to get up and see your lawn destroyed. It's the farmers and ranchers livelihoods that they're destroying and uh, a lot of people don't realize the amount of destruction that those hogs can inflict on a on a piece of land. If uh, ranchers, if they start tearing up uh, like a spring or a water hole or whatever, it's uh, it all comes back on them and I don't think people realize the economic impact that they have. They reproduce up to three litters a year um, and can produce as young as six months old. They can breed. They can have up to about eight to ten piglets at a time. And so the reproduction of them is so massive that if you don't control them, the population just explodes. There is people that are uh, unsure of us trapping these hogs or harming them. I would just have them consider the damage they pose to uh, agricultural crops alone. There's 89 million in damages in grain crops alone. Um, there's damages to livestock, young wildlife, uh, nesting birds. Um, across the state of Texas, there is water quality threats uh, with E. coli that they, they're responsible for. So they're a big problem and I would just um, have them consider that. If uh, landowners are interested in this program, they can uh, go to the NRCS office and visit with a district conservationist there and also the Soil and Water Conservation District, and that would probably be the best way to get started.